Hey guys, what's going on? I am bag. I am an actual bag. Lately I've been thinking mobile is too restrictive. I don't know much about uh, the rest of the ecosystem. I don't know about the whole cycle of what's going on. I don't know how the server works. I don't know how HTTP responses work. I don't know how the backend works. I don't know how clusters and load balancer and all that backend stuff and web stuff. I have no idea about. I've been in my own little circle with mobile development and uh, honestly I feel uh, too big for my current role honestly and I want to do more you know uh, so I thought I'm gonna be like a full stack mobile developer you know such a title exists apparently there's tons of people that know back-end stuff and mobile stuff the front-end and the back-end and I want to be one of those people so first options were obviously to mimic the stack that we have at work, which is uh, Python, Flask, uh, all that jazz. So I went down that path and it was going fine. But then I remembered out of some out of the blue that uh, Kotlin is supported on the server, you know, and they have a web framework. They have a couple of them. And today we're just going to be talking about one of them. Kator. I think it means cater to cater for some need. I don't know, I don't care, but that's the name of the platform and uh, we're just going to get started with it because I tried using it a couple of days ago and uh, it's, it's, not, it's not straightforward because it's, uh, it's a community driven thing, but uh, we'll see. Let's jump to the actual implementation. Alright, so here you have the uh, getting started page. Do not do this. Do not go through this page because it will produce a bug from the project that this plugin will uh, start for you. This is an IntelliJ plugin for Ktor, and uh, you can use it to start a new Ktor project. This will produce a project that has a bug, and it will not run. Do not do this. Take the start.ktor.io path instead. It's much better. It produces a correct project. This plugin will produce, it will not produce this text that they're claiming. It will produce another kind of project and it'll, it's going to have a bug. Two of them, here's one of them. So the other path uses Ktor 1.2.1, uh, which is going to produce this uh, project that does not have this bug. So here we are. You have your things you can choose from. Ktor 1.2.1. See, 1.2.0 isn't even included here. That's weird. So this is the example, Ktor demo, this is the version number, whatever. Choose uh, CSS DSL so that you can uh, return CSS and HTML using Kotlin code and go for Apache just as the, uh, just as the original uh, docs advise, but from the other UI, from this UI. Do not do the plugin path. So we're just going to select Apache and the CSS DSL which is going to automatically require this and this is going to automatically require that and just build this will prompt you to download this thing you go over here you got your project looks the same as we're used to on Android I guess we're going to open a new project code downloads if I can get to the downloads all right so just choose OK here. All right, let it sync. And you will not even see the uh, beginning code. You won't see this guy. <laughs> but this is the guy you need. So this is the guy you need. This is the guy that will work. I know it's a little rough. You can see me here complaining about it to the KTOR people. But... Uh, you know, it's, it's just starting as a good initiative. All the rest down the line will be much better, but this starting is, is a little bit rough. So it's synced all up. This is it. Let's take this out. See, first of all, there's this error. This is a syntactic error. All of this is, the, is something we do not need. You're going to do this eventually, the routing. And uh, you're going to do this eventually, but this starting point is not where we want to be. So we're just going to remove everything. And just start the way they want us to start. This way. 
this nice way. All right. This will prompt you to import the needed shit. I sh shouldn't have said shit. It's a family friendly channel. Uh, okay, so we would expect this to run immediately, yes? And see it on uh, 127. Amazing. Done. You have your uh, web server. You have your website. You have everything you need now. So, more facilities to really work easier with this kind of project is to have it auto reload. So if you notice here, we're at this path, the no path path, the nothing, right? This is slash. So if you change something here and you save it, and you build, for example, What do you want from me? There's no module. Why is there no module? Oh yeah, because we changed the way that uh, this was uh, running. We're just going to silence this guy. All right, we build again. These are the tests that were written with the project according to what was here before. According to this, it had module. It had something in the module uh, scope. So this test no longer makes sense. Whatever we built, we change it, nothing. What is our change? We already built, let's build again just to make sure. Nothing. So we wanted to do something. We wanted to change according to our changes. What we should do is, first of all, if you go over here and you continue with the uh, documentation, your first app, all right, including the right dependencies, all of that, we have all of this, right? It's all here. Great. So, running the application, we already did that. Features, application structure, your website. Here we go. Simple routing. Simple routing, we've done this. Serving HTML, no. Serving static, where's auto reload? There we go. If we go over here, Ah, here we go. This is just to get you started with uh, setting up the project and getting it running on localhost, all right? So to do that, you're gonna need auto reload. You can't be going like, uh, run again, stop and rerun. It'll run, if you, if you do this, it'll work, right? Now you see your change, but <laughs> obviously we just wanna build. Even if it's, they don't support not, you have to build. But that's much better than stopping and then running. So uh, it's fine. Auto reload does not work with uh, le more than Java 8. You have to stick to Java 8. I was on Java 12, trying this for years. It wouldn't work, all right? You have to do Java 8. So I removed that, put Java 8 so it would work. So what you do is, what you have to do is uh, feed it this uh, param which is uh, watch paths. So if you go here, you go like, bah. so this value is not what we want. We want actually downloads KTOR demo. This is the path that you have to feed. So it's where your project is, the name of the directory where your project is, and the actual project name. And you have to add the same stuff in uh, application.com so configuration file over here yeah I'm not sure if they're reliant on each other but let's try no nope. how about we stop and run again unlinked for ah this is what they warned us about yeah so here you go if you get this exception, which says uh, runtime exception module function provided as Lambda cannot be unlinked for reload. This is just what we got. is because we're writing it this way. So we have uh, our embedded server. Uh, it's defined inside main, and there's no module. So you need a module. 
So you go over here, you go like this, like a true professional, you copy and paste this guy, brace closes this guy, yeah, that's correct. Okay. Module. Now you can put this test back. All right. Da, da, da. What is wrong with this? There's no testing. Let's remove this as well. This is a remnant of the old code. So you got your routing here. So you remove this guy. Don't need this anymore. You don't need this anymore. You're just defining this guy. Okay, you just need to specify the module that you have. This is what they want from you, man. This is what they want. They just, this will not work and this will work. Why, who cares? All right, so you go to over to resources, application.conf. You also need to add the watch path. No, let's not add that. Let's see if this will run as it is. Mm, it did not see the watch patterns. <clears throat> so you need to uh, add them to the application.conf. Same issue, you just say watch, right? Watch, yes, is equal to downloads ktor demo. Format, run again. Actually, we don't need this guy to assign it to anywhere. Run again. No deployment. All right, because this is download. It needs to be downloads. Be very careful. It work. See, watching for changes, watching for changes. All right, we go here, it works. We change this guy. Goodbye, world. <laughs> no one ever says goodbye, world. Everybody says hello, world. I want to say goodbye to the world. Now we build. We don't run. This is running, right? We want to just build. You go refresh. It refreshes. It's amazing. It's beautiful, right? Okay. So now you got your website running in Kotlin with a embedded server. It's called Netty. I'm not sure if it uses Apache down the line or I have no idea what's going on, but it does not matter at this point. Okay, so you can go on with this stuff. Uh, you're already done simple routing. You can just follow along. It's very simple. Uh, the only hiccup was just starting, you know? Yeah. So if we try to do this, let's see, free marker. Yeah, well, you need to import free marker first. How do you do that? Setting up the project. Okay, what about we go back here? Let's see what we can do here. Uh huh. We select it as part of the stuff that we want. If we don't know the exact uh, import statement, or you just need to, uh, like you could select anything here, you know, velocity. They're going to use it down the line in the docs. So you could just select all of that. Use the working version of this project generator, which is this website, this web app. Don't use the, the plugin. All right, free marker. There it is. All right, we go to build.gradle. And we just shove it in here. Doesn't matter. What is this? Nope. We don't want the JetBrains version. This is going to auto import. So, Apache Free Marker is a template engine for the JVM, and thus you can use it with Kotlin. That's a good thing about Kotlin, by the way, that uh, it's 100% interoperable with Java. So whatever framework you have with Java, whatever thing you're used to doing with Java, like Spring or anything like that, it's still going to work because it's Kotlin. Create a file called resources templates index.ftl, free market template. All right. Do we have that? Yes, we do. And it says whatever it says. All right. So this is like a language inside the HTML. It's, it's, uh, it's like a templating language. I know, I'm not sure. But this is how it goes. Uh, this is a variable that they've defined called data, which they use here. 
the type of it is index data which is relying on us to define right this implicitly means that you have to define this so we'll just do class index data uh, which is going to have val data as a list of what list of items list of string i guess all right so uh list of int fine all right integers this is we've defined this all right so they use it here they expect you to define it and they're gonna handle everything like that so what they do is define an html tag a body tag and ul meaning it's gonna have a list of items inside and this is a for loop no hash list this is a function that they have list date the items as item yeah it's a for loop and for every item of those put it inside an li tag and the value of it is the actual item and then close the list it's pretty cool actually looks good so we've loaded the template we've loaded the imports now it's time to send the user to this route whenever they want to access like for example the user goes um, index and then you want to show this HTML page right or let's just call it HTML no this is where we're gonna see our stuff let's close this guy and this guy all right so what you need to do is install it into the code like initializing I guess so you're gonna do that here I'm guessing yes yes all right yes yes this is gonna look inside the base package path which is the templates which what cre we created this is the loader whatever and now for the actual route get we said we wanted HTML no it has to start with a forward slash all right whenever you hit this guy what do you do let's try to guess call dot respond respond no let's just look ah respond okay a new free marker content object given index.ftl and the map of a map called data okay 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 let's just copy the line and then explain it this is the line come on man format all right is this hard to read no so whenever you hit this HTML guy this call object is gonna store inside its response object which is already given to you by the framework uh, it's gonna store an object of free marker content which includes the template you defined here no nope, here and then it's gonna also give it if you look at the constructor where's the constructor that's the constructor this can be null this can be null and you have to feed all of these can be null you have to feed the the content type and then the template no the model and then the template yeah because the model is any see model to be passed during template rendering so this is your model it's called it's gonna map the word data to the value index data which we said we we were we promised this guy we would give him index data which is a list of integers and inside this index data we've actually defined the list of integers one two three so what it's going to do is grab the one put it in an li grab the two grab the three etc and this e tag is belonging to this constructor yeah you could just leave it as null why would you define it why did they define it it's useless all right now we can do what we don't have to run now we just build mm -hmm. that's it thank you for watching see you in the next one